the, the danger is in these sorts of questions, you give a sort of, well, if you wrote, you went off and wrote a fluid simulator or you wrote some shaders, that would be a good tech skill to, to have. Actually, the skill you've got to have is the ability to sort of solve your way around problems and sort of think inventively and think originally. Okay, if you had a complete carte blanche to go off and write anything in the world, anything in the world, anything in VFX, which you think we might, might find useful, what would you pick to put your effort into? And it, the reason I ask that is basically to sort of see whether there's an area someone's very interested in and passionate about. Because usually if you're thinking passionately, you've, you've invested a lot of time and energy into understanding it. And you've got original ideas around it where you, you start to think, well, I could make that better. And I think that's what uh, I and I imagine most VFX houses look for in a, a sort of a, a new hire. You're looking for that problem solving. So it's almost not, here's a checklist of things you must have done. You want the, the potential hire to be someone who, to have already an idea about it. So we're looking for someone that gets it. You can look at someone's work and say, right, it's simple but it's accurate, it looks realistic. It's not about trying to destroy an epic city on your showreel, but, but finding that not one thing in there actually feels very realistic. I would rather have something that is simple and shows that the fundamentals of understanding are, are very much there and and that it's well executed. We look at what they're capable of doing, and that's kind of looking at what type of personal projects have they been involved in. Certainly these are people who haven't been employed before, so they've never been asked by a company to do something. So what have they done by themselves? What kind of initiative have they taken upon themselves? And I think what's really interesting that is what thought process they went through to achieve their goal. They're going to have very limited resource to work on this personal project, so what did they choose to do? And more interestingly, what did they choose not to do and why? Because it's a lot of compromise that you make even in the professional world. And it's really interesting to see kind of how individuals handle that, what kind of sacrifices they're willing to make and how personally invested they are in somebody else's product. I like to see that people are involved and aware of what the industry is doing. Um, so any young coordinator c comes in, if they're always at the cinema or they're doing stuff at home or they're creating things or shooting their own films, I get a sense that they are not just doing this as a job, but they have a genuine interest in, in you know, the medium that we're, we're, we're going to be working in. Especially if I think you are perhaps going through the coordinator, producer, exec producer, you know, that sort of which often will lead into a sort of management area. It, you have to be aware of what's going on. You know, who are the studios? What are they producing? Who are the independent producers in, in the UK? Where are the film festivals? How everything's working with or against each other just, just generally. For me, it's whatever you choose to do, Whatever idea you come up with, whether you're a, a coordinator who's wanting to shoot their first sort of tiny film, or whether you're a CG artist that wants to develop a, an idea, it's about having conviction for that idea. So, you know, it's like making a decision. Make a decision and, and stick with it, you know, and come up with an idea and then do it to your best ability. Don't do something just to wow someone. Do it because it's an idea that you want to carry through because then it, it will shine because you will put your natural passion into whatever um, aspect of creativeness you're, you're, you're putting on the table.